Okay, so let's look at digital signatures. And we'll look at three main types of digital signatures. These are three of the most common signatures that we'll find. The first one is EC, Leptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm, ECDSA. The next one is EDSA, EDDSA. And the last one that we'll look at is the SNOR Signature Method. Okay, so those are the three methods that we'll look at in terms of understanding our signatures. And basically what we have is that we have Bob and Alice and we have a message. Alice has a private key, we'll call it SK, and a public key, PK. What happens is that she uses her private key to produce a signature RS and then Bob will use the message and Alice's public key to prove the signature on the message. Okay, so let's look at the detail of how each of these methods work. Each of them now is an elliptic curve method because it's much more efficient than using discrete logs. So with elliptic curve methods, we have a base point on the elliptic curve. So our elliptic curve might have an equation such as this. And then we work out, we generate a private key, SK, 256 value typically, and create a point, SKG, which is G added SK times an elliptic curve, that's an efficient operation. This becomes the public key. And S key is the secret key, private key, and the public key. Alice keeps this point, this scalar value secret, but can release this point value here. So let's have a look at the detail. So we can use a number of curves. We can use the one that's used in Bitcoin which is this one, and that's an A value of 0 and a B value of 7. Or we could use the NIST curve of P256. As long as Bob and Alice know the curve that they're using and the parameters involved, then everything is fine. And probably when we're sending the signature, we might send the parameters that we've used here. But there is a prime number which is used, and there is also a value of n. n is the order of the curve and it relates to the total number of points that are possible. When we're conducting our operations that don't involve points, we will always do a mod n with that. Okay, so let's see how this actually works. Initially, what we do is we take the message and we create a hash of it. So it might be sha uh, 512 and then what we do is that we mask off the bottom 32 bytes of the hash. This gives us a 256 bit hash which should be secure. Now what we do is that we create a random value k. k will vary the signature each time. We don't have to pass k but K will make sure that each time the R and the S value vary. Then we create another point called R, which is K times G. So it's G, and we add that K times to get this point R. We then take the X value, X point of it, and do a mod of N. Then for S, we create k to the minus 1, inverse k, mod n, times h plus r times the secret key. Uh, Alice knows the secret key. She knows the value of r and h, and she can work out the inverse of k, mod n. It's a special operation that we have, fairly simple there. 
She then sends the value of R and S along with the message and her public key. And the Bob will now, hopefully, go and check that message. So Bob does the same thing, almost takes the hash of the message because he's received that, then takes the lower part of the message, the lower 32 bytes, 256 bits, and then works at a value of C, which is inverse of S, mod of N. Then works out two values, U1 is H times C, and U2 is equal to R times C. Next, next, uh, Alice will check the uh, the value of R or the point R is equal to the X point of U1G plus U2 times the public key. Okay, so U2, U1 is HC, G is a point, R, C, P, K. So the next thing we'll do is that we'll then group C, HG plus R, P, K. And the value of C is the inverse of the inverse of S. So it's HG plus RPK divided by K to the minus 1 H plus RSK. Okay, so that's the value of uh, that. Okay. So then that's equal to HG plus R SKG because the secret key times G is the public key divided by K to the minus 1 H plus R SK and that and that is the same so that becomes G and we move K up to the top that becomes R K which is equal to this here. If we take the x coordinate of that, that will equal to the value of r. And if this works, then we can prove that Alice was the one that signed it with her uh, private key. And in this case, we're using the public key from Alice here and the R and the S value to be able to match this here. So this is ECDSA and it's used fairly ex extensively in things like Bitcoin and in signing uh, transactions. It has weaknesses and those weaknesses are overcome normally using this other method here and it uses an Edwards twisted curve Typically, with the curve of curve 25519, which has a prime number of 2 to the power of 255 minus 19. It also has a base point, if you're interested, equal to 9. That's the base point for the x value. And typically, in curve 25519, we don't bother about the y-coordinates, we only bother about the x-coordinate when we're doing our calculations. So let's see how this one works. So again, uh, Alice will have a secret key. And then we'll work out the public key. Public key is equal to the secret key times g. Okay, there was a secret key there that we had, and there was the public key there before. That was the key pair. 
Now, as before, we'll take a hash of the message and we can use the, the lower 32 uh, bytes uh, for this. So that would be 32, click that. Now what we'll do is we'll do something slightly different. We'll take a hash of this hash and then we'll append it with the message. Sorry, we take a hash of the secret key here. Sorry, that should be the hash of the secret key here. And then that is then used in there where we append the, the byte array of this onto the byte array of the hash. So in this case, there'll be 32 bytes and then whatever we have for the message will be appended onto that and we'll create our hash. Now we'll create our R value equal to RG as we did uh, before. And our S value becomes R plus the hash of R appended with the public key, appended with the message and times SK. And we've also got a mod N in there. I won't put it on there just now, but that's the calculation that we would have. And so we have our signature of RS again, and we can take the X point for this, and we can do a mod N to work out uh, the value of R that we're going to use. We work out this value for R. Now, on the other side, uh, Bob will take the hash of R, PK, and the message there because he's received R, takes the X coordinate of that and takes that as part of the hash, takes the public key, and then takes the, the message and regenerates the value of S and then checks SG and V2. So V1 is equal to SG and V2 is equal to uh, R plus the public key times S here. So we now need to prove this, that these two values are the same. And we'll just do that because V2 is equal to R plus PK times S and R is equal to RG and PK times S which is the hash of R PK and then the message. Okay, so we have RG PK then this hash here. So that is equal to RG plus S K G and the hash of R P K M there. And we find the S is R plus H R P K M. And we take the G out, and that becomes S G, which is equal to that one. So if the two values V1 and V2 are equal when uh, Alice, when Bob calculates this S value here, and then the V1, V2, using uh, the lowercase s here, and the big S here for that one. If they match, then, then the signature is correct. This is a more secure method than this method because of this hashing that goes on here. As a final method, let's look at the SNOR 
method for signing. So in this case, what we do is that uh, again, we create our secret key and we have our public key equal to the secret key times G as we uh, did uh, before. Now what we do again is we create a K value and we create a point K G for that. Then we create our S value equal to K minus the hash value of the message pended with R times the private key. This becomes the S value. And the R value is equal to just the X coordinate mod N. This one here is also mod N. So we end up with our S and our R value in here. Now, Alice, Bob, will check this. And we'll check that PK, H, the message, and the R value, plus SG is equal to K, G, which is equal to the, the R value that's, that's sent. So PK times the hash plus SG is equal to KG. Where KG is equal to the R value that's, that's sent. So it's an S and an R value that's sent this time. So then this becomes our secret key times G and the hash of M R plus the K value, the S value, which is K minus the hash, the message of R times X times secret key times G. This is this part here for the S value. Now what we have is that's equal to X secret key times G times the hash of the message of R, that part there, plus K G S K minus S K G hash of M R. And you can see that this part cancels with this part. So we end up with a value equal to K G. And that proves the snore, snore signature.